Hi, this is Paul Neal at Penn Productions. I'm just going to do a quick tutorial today on how to do a procedural mountain range. I'm just going to start off in the top viewport. And we're going to start off with a plane, and we're going to go with one about 4,000 by maybe 1,500 wide, there or thereabouts, and uh, we're going to give it a whole lot of segments. So let's just crank these up because we're going to be using displacement maps. Not quite that high. Whoops. And take it up to about there. And then sideways, we'll take it up. Holding down control, by the way, speeds up your spinner. And we'll make them all into squares for now. We're also going to make sure that it renders really, really clean by setting the um, density to 2. So it'll actually render twice as many. So we're looking at, uh, uh, well, by the time this renders, 2 million faces. So now let's uh, go ahead and uh, start building on this. I'm actually just going to turn off the uh, uh, wireframe overlay on this object as we start working with it. Uh, give it a, gr a brown color. Just a brown color, we'll call it ground for now as we uh, get to the point of uh, being able to texture that. Just shut off the grid. Now we are actually going to use the Space Warps geometric deformable displace map. So I'm just going to uh, pull one of those out. And each one of these is going to represent a mountain. And uh, so I'm going to uh, move our little mountain into place. I'm actually going to move it up because it won't matter where it is uh, above the uh, object. It's going to matter where it, is, uh, where it is side to side. Uh, I'm going to jump into slate. And we're just going to make sure that uh, we actually have um, mental ray running. And down the assign renderer, let's just go over to mental ray so we can have it running. And what we want to do is we're just going to start with a gradient ramp. We're going to use a whole lot of gradient ramps. So in the uh, displacement uh, space warp, we're going to take that gradient, gradient ramp, we're going to drop it in, and we're going to turn up the amount in the gradient or the strength, and let's just connect it up with a bind to space warp. And so we can see now we've got our mountain. It doesn't look much like a mountain, I know. Let's uh, work on that. Let's go and uh, set this to be uh, oops, uh, radial. And I'm going to take get rid of the center tab and change, flip these over to black. So here's our mountain starting to be built. I'm going to make it a bit smaller so that when we add noise, it doesn't bleed off the side and start uh, chopping the edges off. And um, then we're going to uh, add some noise to it. Scale that noise up. Maybe it's going to be turbulent noise instead. And we can start building our map out. Now, unfortunately, because it's a linear effect, sometimes it's a little bit hard to get a nice smooth transition. But if we do something like that, it's not so bad. So now we have a mountain that we can push up and down. We can actually scale it, make it larger. We can play around with the tabs on here until, until we get a mountain that we're interested in. And we'll call this a real simple mountain then. This is our uh, real simple easy going mountain. Maybe I'll just increase the noise on that. Leave it a little bit. There we go. So that's kind of a jaggy pointy mountain that we have. So let's make another one. Now, so we're going to make a couple of these. I'm just going to copy this out. And again, we're just going to bind to space warp. And it does the same thing. So let's uh, make a new one here. And in this case, we're actually going to use a composite map. And we're going to put the composite map into this one. We're going to say instance. We're going to pipe in our old one. And we're going to change that up a little bit. We're going to cap this one off. Or, or actually, you know, let's make this one the bumpy one. And uh, so we're going to need a couple of layers here. We're going to actually put some ridges in it where the water's flowing down and, and the like. So again, we're going to need a gradient ramp. And this gradient ramp is actually going to be set to uh, spiral, which is kind of going to go around in a weird spirally uh, step fashion. So I'm going to set them all to white for now. And then I'm going to start adding flags. And each flag is going to be alternating back and forth. So I can just drag out from one to the other. That's probably pretty good. 
and it's giving this effect. So we're getting a, a bunch of sort of low points put in. In the composite map, let's change it over to multiply. And we can even pull the amount down. So we're getting these grooves put into it. So we're getting these nice crevices where the you know water's been uh, going down. Now you can see the top, of course, is really messing up. We really want to get rid of it off the top. So again, to get rid of it off the top, in the mask layer for layer two, we're going to use a gradient ramp. And so in this gradient ramp, we're going to make it real simple again. We're going to make it radial with uh, gra uh, grad gradating out the top here. And I can just pull this in and maybe give it a little bit less on the top. And that's just getting rid of that mess on the top there, but giving us these nice crevices that are uh, coming down, uh, down the sides. Let's make one more for our process as well. And again, we're just going to bind that up. And let's do another one with uh, composite map. Let's place that in. Let's grab, let's start with this one that we've already got. And this time, let's cap it off. I want to pull it down and get rid of this top one. And I want to break the top down on this one. So it's actually going to be like a... And yeah, one of those ones has got a flat top. It's completely worn off on the top. I'm just going to play with that a little bit. And then let's actually put it on a bit of an angle, too. So right now it's completely flat. We could actually um, get it to uh, angle a touch. And again, guess what? We're going to use a gradient ramp for that. Top one, we're going to put on multiply. We're going to get rid of the uh, end there, and we can... Just adjust that a little bit, or maybe we can just leave it up and use it the, uh, the weight in here as well. Just to angle it and get it to angle. We could even uh, play with the uh, this a little bit and uh, make it a little more extreme, let's say. So you can play around with that. And again, with a little bit of noise in here, we'll use turbulence. Let's crank up the uh, size a little bit, give us a rough top on that one, and uh, we'll, we'll just adjust, make some adjustments to these. I'm not liking the uh, real steep top on this. Maybe we'll do something like that. Probably looking a bit better, and we'll use the gradient here, cap off the top a bit more. There, yeah, that's probably better. Looks more mountainish, I think. There, this one's pretty sharp, but we're going to leave it like that. You'll see where we're going. So we can increase the height of this one, and we've got three basic mountains going at this point. So let's go and make a bit of a set here. We're going to make a sort of a uh, channel down here with water in it flowing down between mountains. So all we need to do now is just start propagating these mountains around. Now what's nice is we can easily grab and work with these mountains and change them up a whole lot. So I'm going to mix this mountain into the other one that I just created to come up with a whole new mountain. So we can actually start coming up with sort of mountain ranges. Let's continue this one down. And again, I'm just going to Add that in, and let's twist that around to make it a little bit different. It is even possible to rotate these sideways and kind of get a little bit different, uh, you know, uh, shape going. So you can see how they mix in real nice and actually start building sort of completely different ones one to the other. We're not even working with the size yet uh, of them and, and playing around with the different sizes. So here we can take another one in. We're getting a completely different shape again. Maybe we'll let this go down in a little bit more. Looks pretty good. We can even increase the height of that one. Take it up higher. We'll make our uh, river that we're going to create weave a little bit around some of these.
And let's cap that off with uh, maybe another one of these pointy ones down here somewhere. That looks pretty good, even just just as it is. Maybe we'll uh, angle it again, get a little bit more uh, shape to it. That looks pretty cool. So let's do the other side of the river then and get the other side uh, worked out a bit. I'm just trying to get a little bit more sort of zigzaggy happening uh, in the uh, in the river. That's nice because you can just easily just move these around to get those shapes and forms working the way you want. So let's just copy one over on the other side and we'll build up the other side. So there's our mountain range, uh, you know, uh, put together. We need a, a river flowing down it now and, and actually have a, a nice river flowing down between them. That's going to be really easy because we're just going to take another plane object. We get about the same size, I guess. And we're going to move it up to give us our water base. And just for now, just so that we know it's water, I'm just going to make it blue. And again, it uh, it has a whole lot of vertices in it. And we're going to need a shader for that. And we're going to need to uh, set that up. So the shader for it is going to be the arc design material. So we're going to drop that on there. And in the arc design, we're going to set that to the water. And uh, now we also need a little bit of noise on there to uh, make it look like it's uh, rippling and, and flowing a bit. Maybe we'll take it down a little bit lower. Maybe we want to move some of these mountains over to uh, maybe this one here. Get the sides pressed in a bit more, make it feel a little deeper, sort of a little uh, more, you know, more of a cavern sort of feel to it. So when he was on our water surface, we are going to add a noise modifier. And we can just crank up some noise and set the scale probably down, I'm guessing. And we're also going to scale the gizmo out sideways on this to make our water look like it's running. So we just kind of make that noise wider is what that's doing. It's stretching the noise side to side. So you can see that it's giving us a, a ripplier sort of noise. So I'm going to take that down. I don't want it too ripply. And we'll take the size down a bit more. Kind of hard to tell what's happening. Maybe with a wireframe on it will help. And I'm going to call it fractal. That looks pretty good. So we're going to animate that as well. So let's get our water running. I'm going to need more frames probably than this. So let's let's go along to a uh, thousand frames uh, to do what I'm doing with the time bar here. It's your uh, uh, control alt and a either a right, middle, or left mouse button uh, to uh, deal with the start and end time or length of time. And so I'm going to uh, just simply animate this moving from one end to the other. So I'm just going to pull my water down. We'll see how fast it's going other time. You can see that the water is moving now. We could also take the phase here that's going to um, that's already animated and say animate the noise as well. So now we're going to be having uh, water moving as well as sort of phasing. And let's make sure both those are set to a linear tangent type. And so we're we've got those and we're just going to set it to linear so that they uh, so it just continues out throughout the scene without speeding up or slowing down. Might be moving too fast. We'll uh, we'll see how far it's going. Maybe I'll just pull it down 
pull it back a little bit here. Oops, with animate on yet. Could be good. Now, one of the things going to be difficult to do with these mountains is to, uh, is to texture them right off the bat. Let's do something really, really fast and simple to get a texture on there. We can, we can actually work with it um, and use a gradient ramp, believe it or not, to, uh, to get a texture going on it. And uh, to be able to do that, however, we're going to need to capture this because I don't want to destroy it at this point because I've got all these displace bindings and you can't really texture map above it in a linear fashion. So we're going to snapshot this and and, uh, and create a snapshot of this. We'll call this um, um, disp mountains for displaced mountains. And in this case uh, I'm going to use compound object mesher just drag out a mesher object and I'm going to pick my mountains. So it's going to give me an exact replica of the mountains. That's going to allow me to just hide off these mountains for now. And we can place this set of mountains in the same location uh, that we had the other one. So actually let's just do this quickly. And um, this is our mesher object. I'm just going to say a line and align those up to pivot to pivot. And then I'm going to pick the uh, displace mountains and just say hide. So we've got this uh, set up. Now we can add on the mesher object, we can uh, add a UVW map modifier. And that UVW map modifier is going to have Y coordinates. For now, I'm going to say fit. And actually, let's rotate the uh, coordinates uh, around. I'm just going to uh, angle snap on, just to make sure it's 90. And I'm going to say fit again. That's why I'm mapping from the side. I'm also going to increase, I'm going to scale the map up a little bit, just in case I go and change the height of the mountains later on. You'll see where I'm going with this. So let's go back to our material. And this time we're going to need a standard shader. We're going to put that on our mountains. And in the standard shader, I'm going to use a gradient ramp. Gradient ramps can be left on linear. Let's just show that in the viewport. You can see it's going from one end. Let's uh, negative 90 in the W. So we've got white on top. And I'm going to go and give it an aqua sort of color on the bottom. And then we're going to go to some green tones. And then we're going to go to some brown tones. And then we're probably going to go off to white. And so I'm going to give us some white mountaintops. And let's clip that green off. So it just goes part way up. The aqua is going to be underneath there for the uh, water to uh, blend into. And uh, have something reflecting underneath that's probably the right sort of color. Let's take that green down and the brown down. And again, let's add a little bit of noise. And maybe make that fractal noise. And that's starting to look pretty cool. So now we've got our mountain range. Of course, we could do all kinds of texturing on that, but that's going to be uh, good enough for uh, what we've got. So there's our procedural mountain uh, mountains created and we can go and fly down between those and it looks pretty cool. Be able to move our mountains, replace our mountains. Rotate our mountains, scale our mountains and make new mountains from old mountains. So it's a nice quick way now just to make this look last bit of sort of cool in the last step. And I'm going to go and grab um, both the water and the mesh and see if this works with a bend modifier on top. Uh, should do anyways. And I want to put a bend on this.
Bendar River so it flows around. Because our bend is above our noise and our water, that is even bending with it. So you can actually see that the ripples on the water are flowing and rippling around the and all the way down and actually are flowing down the river as they're going the whole way. There's my quickie tutorial on doing a mountain rage.